Okay. Okay, let's start. Uh, having the first uh, lecture after the lunch is a challenge, but uh, we see if we can, if I can keep you awake, and myself. Uh, I'm going to talk my lecture because these are two parts. One part dealing with mechanized welding, and I choose to call it what people seldom talk about, uh, and I will explain it a little bit later. And the other part will be about the uh, material for geothermal uh, uh, environments. It has some connection with Mr. Hansen or, 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 or where they mentioned, but I will have a little bit more focus on, on welding. Uh, that's me. Uh, very short, I uh, joined ESAP three, three years ago. I uh, spent half of my time in the automotive industry and half of my time in the heavy we uh, welding industry. Uh, working with something we call at least a welding added engineering and we are three, three uh, young, young boys here as we can see. Uh, our task is mainly to uh, help our customer making more money and that is, sounds very simple and clear but it can be difficult from time, time to time. Uh, trying to avoid them focusing on lowering the price on filler metal. So instead we try to help them in, in, in other ways. Normally when we have a presentation about the mechanized welding and welding optimization, uh, people start to talk about power sources, welding gas, uh, welding liners, etc. So I'm not going to talk about that. Uh, before I go into the presentation, there are three definitions. I just will go through very quickly so we will be on the same page. Uh, when we talk about mechanized welding, we talk about uh, welding operations where you can change the welding parameters and whatever you want du du during welding. Uh, in contradiction to automatic welding, where you do most of your adjustment between the w welding beads. And then we, uh, we have ro ro robotic welding, and that you can hear from, from, from the name what we are talking about. Uh, starting with, with the first question, why do we want to go to, from manual welding to automatic welding? If, if you ask people, this is the most uh, com common answer you will, you will get. Lack of skilled welders, working environment, improved quality, control heat input, uh, repeatability, and uh, higher productivity fa factors. And uh, I'm going to go a little bit into details with the last four, four ones. Uh, I try to put everything together, how, how, how it, it is linked. Uh, if I can get, you have here your uh, welling method, gives you the dep deposition rate, arc time, the welling volume, welling data, and arc time factor, which gives you the cycle time. And uh, everybody knows that at least 70% of the quality and the productivity is defined already during the design stage. And when our people, at least our sales people or our customers want us to, to help them, they have al already decided that. So what we try to do is to focus on this part here, the degree of optimization. Because, because there is a lot of money to gain here. You have a, di a direct connection to the cy cy cycle time, which then is connected to the labor cost and the machine cost, which everybody, at least in Western Europe, we know that is the biggest cost. In China, the situation is a little bit t uh, different since the labor cost is so low. So to, uh, to do automation in China, it has to be for other reasons than for uh, fi fi financial re uh, reasons. And not only discuss how many kilo per hour that is a discussion we try, try to uh, avoid. It's uh, too simple. And uh, 
at 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 the end on the bottom line we we will have a total wel welding cost uh, there are mainly three factors you can affect pretty simple the first one is the well, uh, well vo volume the joint volume gives you the uh, amount of filament metal if you reduce it you will have less filament metal you will reduce the the arc time and uh, reduced arc time means that you can produce uh, more stuff for the same time. Uh, just some caution by reducing the joint volume. If you reduce it too much, you might f uh, run into problem with solidification cracks or a chevron crack, a different type of, of crack. So take it slowly step by, uh, by, by step. The question you have to ask, uh, ask yourself, N now when you can produce more units, more components, can you sell it or not? And uh, what do you do with, with this extra time you have? And this is a question many of our customers don't want to, to answer. If they can pr produce more stuff, maybe they don't need so many welders. And they can lay off people if they want. So it's, uh, it's not so easy always to say, okay, we want to I increase our productivity, we want to take away the bottlenecks. Because it it's can be ve very easy to go out to a customer and improve his productivity with four or five hundred per, per, per percent. But if we would go out there and tell them, we can improve your productivity with, with 400 percent, the welding responsibility or the production manager will shoot us. Because then we have told them they haven't done their, 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 their job. So instead of saying 400%, we, we say 40%. Take a step by, by, by step. But you have to have an answer to this question. What do you want to do with your spare time or extra units? Will you make it storage there and take the cost of that? And what to do with the people? Uh, the other thing you can affect is the welding, welding method. Through the deposition rate, you have some example here, and uh, the arc time, depending on the welding methods, and you also have the, have the efficiency. How much will you go into the well, how much will be, 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 uh, be in the slag? And we ask, for example, put Give you some example here with some so much arc welding. The yellow bars is what we can achieve. The green one is what we promise. It, it's a slight difference. And the last thing, this also could be very s simple to, to affect, that is the welding data you use. If you increase the stick out, you will have a high deposition rate. You put more heat on the wire or if you change from a positive electrode to negative electrode, it's the same, it's the same, same thing, thing there. Hmm. And uh, of course, there are a lot of other parameters you can affect. Uh, if you make a, a kind of a quality re re review of the processes, what we try to focus a lot of that is the time to repair and re rework uh, defective parts. Uh, we have a customer who spent half an hour to one hour grinding a waste batter. And every hour, 50, 60 euro per welder and a couple of uh, thousands per components. Start to cal cal calculate your, yourself. You end up with a huge um, amount of money, which you can uh, uh, fix just by uh, adjusting the well welding pa parameters slightly. Uh, at, at, at ESA, we have developed a program to uh, help our customers do this type of cal calculation. Uh, most of our competitors, they have the same, but they have only the upper part. They only talk about the position rate. We try to summarize all costs. And at the end, you will get a saving per year. And if you have to do an investment, that is also 
into a cal cal calculations. If we don't want to do this type of cal calculation, there are some simple ru ru rule of thumbs which we, we, we are using. We are saying that one, a welder he, uh, used one and a half to two ton wire per, per year. And you need four to six welders in two shift op 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 operation in order to justify a robot I I I investment between your f f fingers. And two shift operation mean roughly 10 tons of filament metal. So if you don't have 10 tons of filament metal for heavy production, you will uh, have a big problem to justify your, 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 your investment. And if you don't have 10, 10, 10 ton, you have to think about, can I move pro production? Can I move products from another line to that line you want to me mechanize? Uh, some other rules, if it is the cost for the welder, which are the biggest cost you have, then you should focus on the arc time. If it's a capital cost, then you sh it is the cycle time. The cycle time is the arc time, including handle time and whatever you put in there. And the drivers are mainly the duty cycle arc time, the position rate, well, volume, according to what I show you here. Here. You can just go back to this picture here and see where you have your cost, and then you know what you have to, uh, to, uh, to uh, do. Uh, another advantage when you go to auto mechanized welding or automation is that you can control the heat input. Uh, First, when it comes to de de distortion, it's uh, very important not only to control heat input, but also to contr control the uh, volume of metal you put in there. Let's say that you're going to do a fillet weld with a throat of four. That gives you uh, a, a, an area of 60 square millimeter. The welder put in five, just to be sure, that gives you uh, an uh, area of 25. So from 65 to 25, it's ne nearly the double just to go for throat four to five. That means a bigger uh, cost for filament metal and it also means more de uh, de <coughs> distortions. Uh, we know from the welding metallurgy, if you increase the heat input, not only with, the, as you show here, the uh, toughness in heat effectively go down, but, but also the yield strength in the well will go, to go down. Uh, not respecting the interpass temperature, you can easily lose uh, 100 megapascal on a 70, 80 hectares, easily. As uh, Mr. Hansen show you la later, I'm not a I'm not my biggest fan of this. <laughs> uh, if you don't respect the interpass temperature and the welding heat, you might run into problem with uh, sensibilization and the granular co corrosion when it comes to sta stainless steel. And today, uh, we use more and more duplex sta stainless steel. Uh, one of the reasons why we do that is that you can, uh, due to its higher yield strength, you can go down in thickness. You go down in thickness, you can uh, make lighter uh, 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 components. But one of the things with uh, uh, duplex stainless is, is, is that you have to respect the heat input in interval, the, the, the suppliers are saying. Because let's say this is a, a duplex stainless, stainless steel. Here it's liquid, it starts to solidify here. Here is pure ferrite according to the di diagram here. At this point, some of the ferrite is going to transform to austenite. And if the cooling rate is too fast, 
then the fair quantum will be too high because there is no time to uh, for transformation to austenite. So it's a question of, of, of the balance here. I'm I, I'm com coming back to to that late, later on. Uh, there is an uh, opinion that if the quality demands goes up, then the productivity has to go down. Uh, in this case, with a simple steel, no change in uh, uh, quality demands, there is no uh, problem to increase the pro pro productivity. Uh, if you would go to a, a more complicated steel, the P23 steel, P24 steel, then uh, all, all of a the sudden you have to be take more care about the heat input and how you do in performing your, 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 your welding. And uh, we think that by using better te technology, you can just postpone the curve this direction here. So higher quality does not mean automatically that you need to lower your Pro productivity. There are te technology to take, take care, care of that. When it comes to the quality part, there are a lot of standards, so I'm not going to talk about them them either. You can read them. There are ISO 9000, 3834. They give you most of, most of the advices you need. What they don't talk about is maybe this this distortion, the welding position. Always, when it comes to mechanized welding, you need to work, the welding engineer need to work more closely to, to the design de de department, making sure that you always weld in the best po po position. If you start to mechanize, you need to have better con control over what you put in to the robot because the robot do exactly what you tell, tell it to uh, do. So shit in, shit out. And one of the most important things to, uh, to con control that is the, the joint pre 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 preparation. And I'll give you some uh, to to tolerances, how much uh, de 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 deviation a system can take. So it, it's, it's, it's not much. We're talking about the millimeter here, here and there. That's all. Just uh, the days and practice of the material. In, in the past, most of the material was silicon killed. Then, due to uh, the fact that more and more wanted to have galvanized uh, material, they they went from silicon killed steel due to the sandalin effect to aluminum killed steel. Uh, but that will affect the fluidity of the weld pool totally. Uh, also, if you mix a short shoot blasted with machine and pickle uh, plates, maybe you, you, you will for sure have to change your welding pa pa parameters. It will affect the penetration, it will affect the welding speed, it will affect everything. So don't just change from a pickle plate to a shoot bl plastic plate. The, because it's about the po po pollution on the surface. And uh, some pollution is good for wellability uh, re reasons. You, you, you don't want to have a too clean steel. You may, may, maybe you want it from co corrosion point of view, but not from a welding point, point of view. Uh, the geometric factors cause helix of, 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 of the wire you need to have uh, control over and specify it. And also the power sources. Uh, my uh, friend from Fronius, he talked a little bit about the how, how, how they now have the uh, possibility to uh, con con control the, the, the stick out. So uh, if you are welding with welding machines, constant amperage machines, 
you need to have control over that. Uh, when it comes to mechanized TIG welding, uh, we very often hear that uh, the customer gets problem wh when he changes the batch. He develops a, a parameter and then he gets a new batch and he can't wel wel weld it. Then he has be become a visit of Mr. Maragoni. Uh, the, the natural thing is when uh, the temperature goes up, the surface tension of uh, the weld pool goes, goes down. And you have a circulation in this way. That you can see give you a certain pen penetration and a welding width. If you uh, add some, in this case we, we, we will add, you increase the oxygen content or sulfur content in the base material or welding wire. And now I'm not talking about 1%. Now I'm talking about two, three thousandths percent of sulfur, more or less. You have a totally different sit situation. Then the surface tension will go up with the temperature and the circulation will be the opposite one. This is what we call the Mar Margon effect. And this is very important where you do uh, orbital TIG welding without filament metal or you do the root welding in thicker plates. Because uh, when you do the root welding in TIG welding, you do it without a gap. So the amount of filament metal you add is very, very little. So one way to handle it is to specify the base material. And then I can promise you, you will not get anyone because no, no one will sell it to you. Because what the steel manufacturer does to it today automatically is that he blow down the sulfur content to uh, one thousandth percent roughly. So that means that he had to add, put back some of the sulfur, he automatically blow, blow the to, took away in a step before and he will not do it. Uh, what we did in my previous company, if we were going to weld a pipe system, stainless steel pipe, then, then we made sure first that we had as few batches as possible. And, and, and I know, and only that was a, always a big debate with the purchase de department because they wanted to buy buy pipes from different suppliers so they can get the best prices. And then we, we always had uh, one meter extra, half meter, how, how much you need. Uh, and, and we made some pre-tests. So when we went out on the field and did the job, we had developed the parameter for that batch. And we're talking about the root bead, always. And that is very, very important. That is, I think that is the easiest way to handle the pr problem. Ask for s half a meter, one meter extra pipe, and, 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 and just develop the para para parameter from, for, for that batch. Uh, the, the reason why, why uh, the uh, steel ma man manufacturer blow down the sulfur content is that it's, it's uh, connected with a pitting co 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 corrosion resistance of the material. But in some industry, and you also have some standard, they specify a sulfur content, and that is a compromise between the wellability and the pitting co co corrosion re re resistance. But that's important to, uh, to re rem rem remember if you're going to do a mechanized TIG, TIG welding. When it comes to joint tracking, there, are, there is a jungle of different, different systems. I just make a rule of thumb shot here. Uh, the most common system we, we face, that is the through, through arc tracking system. But then remember, uh, if you do pulse welding or welding with CO2, you might f 
face uh, run run into some problem. It worked best with a uh, short arc or spray, spray, spray arc. Also remember that we're using joint tracking, a thinner wire gives, gives uh, the, the most sta stable arc. That means also it, it, it's easier to uh, uh, use for, for the joint tracking. Uh, throughout tracking, use wa waving. And that will restrict your welding bead. And uh, also, if you need your yarn tracking for uh, making a root bed in pipe pipe weld, uh, welding, you normally don't wave. So in those cases, you can't use that system. Maybe you have to look for laser system or some uh, some some something else. Uh, I made a summary of some uh, welding problems. I, I will not go through it here because there is not, not time. You can read, read that for yourself and jump into the material part if you don't have any questions so far when it comes to... I, I yes? I have one question. Your, your uh, limits for, for sulfur and, and uh, to avoid calcium and rare uh, uh, metals yeah. uh, gives a problem when, when you weld on uh, flanges which are from rock material, which is often added both sulfur and uh, calcium mm. to, to improve the machinability. Yeah. Uh, so when you weld those two together, you, you have a problem. You can see that the melt often mm. yeah. bends aside. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's the same. Uh, in my, when I worked for Areva, we did a lot of maintenance work in, in the nuclear power station. And when, and, and the problem was when we were going to weld old pipes, uh, weld new pipes to, to old <laughs> nozzles. And then the old material always had a high sulfur content compared to the new one. And the, the way you can handle it is, is, is that instead of having the electro in the middle, you need to have it a little bit on the let's say, on the, on the old side. So we moved it as much as the thickness of, of, of the electrode, roughly, on the old side. For, all, for, all, for, all, for the same re re reasons uh, as you're saying. And you might try mixed gases too. Yeah, uh, hydrogen or something like that can help us. Because what, what calcium does is that calcium uh, combines we, we, we sulfur, so it lowers the sulfur c content. Any more questions before we jump into the other part? The rule of thumb regarding two tips and uh, four workers, is that that's Western pay? Yeah, Western pay, yeah. As I, as I said, when we go to China, we can never justify a, any investment at all, not from a fi financial point of view. There, there we have to de de discuss quality. And productivity is never a problem. They just p put in more people, you know. <laughs> it doesn't cost. So, uh, yeah. Okay, then we continue. Uh, when I I started to uh, look into the corrosion problem in the, this geothermal environment. I uh, could identify at least nine different types of cor 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 corrosion. Everything from uniform corrosion to uh, microbiological induced cor corrosion. In general, you have the same problem in this environment as you have uh, in the offshore business. So you actually use the same rules to design your equipment. You have the pressure vessel, and then you have this is the uh, nest, the old nest stand standard for hydrosulfur, hydrogen sulfur environment. And the elements which affect the material is, amongst other, the hydrogen, because hydrogen affect the pH. Does anybody know what pH stands for? 
photo. Ah, could be. But P is actually a mathematical sign for the negative logarithm. So pH stands for the negative logarithm for the hydrogen concentration. So as the hydrogen concentration changes, the pH changes. And that is one of the, the, the reasons, as Mr. Hansen said, most, the most common material to use is simply mild steel, low strength steel, coming, coming more to that later on. If you have chloride, you have to watch up if you are using stain, st stainless steels. Uh, hydrogen sul sulfide, then it calls for a, 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 a mild steel. Carbon di dioxide, it, it will form carbon uh, dioxide together with water form carbo carbonic acid, and that also low, lowers the p pH. Ammonia gives you stress corrosion cracking in black material with the same mechanism as uh, uh, hydrogen cracks. Uh, this is the main problem in this type of environment, I think. I saw on the program that you're going to do a visit t t tomorrow and, the, uh, and discuss this problem further. And oxygen. We have talked a lot about oxygen. I put in a slide just to explain what, what oxygen does. Uh, in this case, you try to have a, you have an environment with pH 7, which is the most common one. Here you have a co co corrosion potential, and you see if you move that you, in this direction here, here you don't have an oxide, here you have one type of oxide, here you have another type of oxide, and when you added or taken away oxygen, you are moving around this direction here. Panel. If you take off the oxygen, you go this di 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 direction. So that's what we, we, what we mean that, that you will get a very unstable oxide film depending on the oxygen con content. Uh, I can skip that. Do like a good time. So the, the main uh, material to uh, use is the is a mild steel of low, low, low uh, strength. When it comes to welding, it's, uh, we normally don't give, give you any problem. But due to the lower strength, you maybe you have to go up the thickness. And when you come up to a certain thickness, you need to use the pre in order to avoid uh, hydrogen cracks or, or whatever. Or maybe you have to do a heat treatment after. Uh, for the mild steel, according to the European standard, when you come about 32 millimeter thickness, you have to do a, do a heat treatment. The main problem, though, during surface, during service, is mainly connected to different type of hydrogen pro problem. And the hydrogen you will, you will get mainly from two two sources. You have the cor corrosion process at the room temperature. Uh, this is uh, the uh, dissolution, it's an anodic process, the dissolution of, of the iron. It has to be balanced with one of these two processes here. But when the, the pH goes, goes, goes down, it's balanced by this process. And this process, you will have the hydrogen. And now remember, when we talk about hydrogen, we talk about atomic hydrogen, H+. Plus not H2, because H2 is two hydrogen atoms, and they're too big to go into the material. They need to be in the atomic stage. It's the same when it comes to welding and, and, and backing gases. You have the one for, called Formiga gas, 90% nitrogen, 10% hydrogen. If you do a welding without a gap, it will not give you any problem. But if you have a gap, some of the Hydrogen will go, go into the arc and dissociate and, and, and give you a, atomic hydrogen, which can enter the, the material late, later on. But it has, so it has to be atomic uh, uh, hydrogen. 
uh, that's why the, you will find in the standard that they have a restriction in, in, in hardness, 248 vicos. And in some cases, uh, you will not manage it even with a 70, 80 electrode. You have to go down in, uh, in uh, st strength to a 70, 60 electrode or, or to cope with, with the hardness. Uh, as I said, there is a standard hand, hand, handed all this. And this is also one of the reasons why you, in this type of environment you have a restriction in nickel content for the filler and, and material because nickel affects the hard, hard ability. Can give to this stress corrosion correction, hydrogen induced stress corrosion correction. The, uh, the other way you, you can get a hydrogen, that is at, at high temperature, high pressure. Most of the environments are working below this 260 degrees, but the, uh, I found in, in the literature, even you have some places in Iceland where the temperature can go up to 340 de de degrees Celsius. And those you might possess a problem for getting this type of uh, hydrogen cracks. Because what happens when the hydrogen in this case goes into to the, the material, the, the steel contains uh, two phases maybe. You have the ferritic phase and you have the, the perlite. And perlite consists of fer ferrite and cementite. And what happens is that the hydrogen combines with the cementite and form methane gas. So it will, uh, it, it will explode the material. It looks like, uh, like, uh, like this here. And uh, one tool to uh, estimate what kind of material depending on uh, temperature and pressure is the so-called Nelson curves. And you can see you have the carbon steel here and then you have more and more chrome because chrome, uh, the, the chrome carbides, they are, are more stable compared to the cement and the, the iron carbide. So they can re, 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 restrict this hydrogen much better. Uh, Stainless stay steel, as Mr. Hansen already, already, already said, Stainless steel, if you add at least 12% chromium, then you will develop an invisible film on, on, on the surface. So it's directly connected with the chromium content. What that means is that you have, you have a material which uh, restrict uniform co corrosion. And that that is what we mean uh, with corrosion resistance. It, it resists uniform co corrosion. One of the drawbacks then with having this film is that the material will be sensitive for local corrosion instead. And is that good or bad? It's up to you to judge. But Uniform co corrosion, as Mr. Hansen told you, there are corrosion tables. You can go in, you can estimate the co corrosion rate more or less. But you get a feeling. How fast will my material co corrode? When it comes to local corrosion, it's much, much, much difficult to, 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 to estimate. Because that happens. You, 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 you get a rupture in, in, in the film and you have a problem. Uh, one, uh, one of the local corrosion mechanisms is pitting corrosion coro coro here. You can see those pits here. And actually what's happened is that you get a rupture in the film, uh, mainly due to the chloride and bromide water. Seawater sea, sea is terrible corrosion uh, prone. And what's happened is that in this pit here, it, it, it will create itself corrosion environment. So it will ha this environment will have, will have no connection with the outer environment here. And in the bottom of the pit, you will very often form hydrochloric acid. And hydrochloric acid and stainless steel, it, it doesn't work. 
And uh, so it's at the, at the catalytic process, and as you already know, there is a connection between the chromium moly and, and ni nitrogen. If we increase those elements, the resistance increases to a certain level. Because if you can Im imagine your, yourself, you have a cup of coffee, you put in sugar. And after some, some while, you are putting so much sugar that uh, it will precipitate. It's the same with, with uh, those uh, elements and, 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 and steel. If you put in too much moly in an iron base, it will start to pre precipitate. And probably it, it will start to precipitate lava fast, sigma fast, uh, and those elements will affect the corrosion resistance in an adverse way. So you can't put in too much. But what you can do, as Mr. Hansen already told you, you can go from an iron base to nickel base. For a nickel base, you can put in more moly. So you compensate for the seg segregation in the iron base. Well, and that's one of, the, one of the reasons why you well high alloy standards still with nickel base fill 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 material. I don't have so much time left. Or two minutes. Yes. Shit. Okay. I have, I have one question. Uh, ah, yes. This, uh, photo. Why is the corrosion so far away from the weld? Oh, it's it's not connected with the, with the weld. Oh yes, that's doesn't heat tip. That's it, it, by, it by doesn't. It does By yeah. the slight oxidation given the colors. That's right. Could be. Maybe Could be. That's the zone. Yeah, but it it's long. But it it, it it doesn't has it doesn't has to be connected with with the weld. It's Mr. Hansa said if you have uh, bad Backing gas, yeah. The, yeah. The, 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 but but yeah. this is uh, this is this is a long distance. Yeah. Can I have five? And the two. I will uh, jump very quick. Uh, stress uh, stress stress corrosion cracking we uh, we talked about a little bit earlier. Uh, this is the thing I want to talk about. When you mix in stainless steel and, and nickel base, if you're welding stainless steel with nickel base, you have to add enough of filler uh, 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 material. Because if you come into uh, the range of 30 to 50 percent nickel, you will get a very crack sensitive weld. So open up and add enough of filler material. You can weld nickel base on stainless steel, but not the opposite. Uh, information nickel base, duplex stain, sta 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 stainless steel, you have a restriction here in the temperature, depending on high temperature, 475 degrees in Britain, and the low temperature due to the fact that the fritic phase is uh, brittle. Uh, yeah. Uh, the ferritic stain sta stainless steel, the big difference between the ferritic stainless steel and uh, the multi-city stainless steel is, is the carbon content. If you increase this loop here, uh, you increase the carbon content, you increase the loop here, and you will get a multi-city structure. Uh, yeah. Uh, in some environment where you have a uh, problem with CO2 cor 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 corrosion, uh, especially in the offshore industry, they have replaced some of the duplex steel with the multi steel, steel, steel instead. And as final question about the welding of the multi steel, there's a big debate which pre temperature to uh, use. If you should be above the multi starting temperature or below it. Uh, my recommendation is to lay in between where you will have. 50-50, because then you will have a double annealing of, of this <coughs> uh, modern city phase from during welding. But the most important thing is, before heat treatment, you need to take it down so you finish the modern city transformation. If the material is very sensitive, don't go to the room temperature. You can estimate it. Uh, if this is where the modern city start, you will finish about 175 degrees lower temperature. So go down to at least that temperature. 
and then do your heat treatment. Sorry for that. I always have too, too many slides. <coughs> I, I hope you didn't fell asleep. We will put your slides <laughs> in our website. Yeah. Site, yeah. So they can enjoy. Yeah. If you have any questions regarding the, the slides I didn't discuss so much, you can always send, send me a mail. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.